Hi there, I'm Aman and you're watching PTO classes. So, in this video, we are going to learn the Lake Isle of Innisfree part 2. Okay, so in the previous video, we have started the poem. Uh, this poem is uh, from the uh, grade 9th textbook Beehive and we have started the uh, poem in the previous video. We have done uh, the introduction part of the video and the uh, first stanza of the video of the poem okay so we have done the part one and in this video we are going to go ahead with the concluding part and i i hope that you have studied the uh, the poem the lecture that i have given you you have gone through it and you know that uh, what the poem is about who is the poet uh, wb yeats okay so Yeats has uh, written a very beautiful poem. You know about Yeats very well that he was born in Ireland and he worked in uh, England, in London. And Yeats was a very famous uh, poet of uh, Romanticism. He was a modern poet and uh, his uh, poem, The Lake Isle of Innisfree, uh, is a well-known poem and uh, you must be aware about the draw, uh, about the uh, backdrop of the poem now. So we have uh, discussed in part one that uh, what is the theme of the poem. So what is the theme of the poem? Nature versus civilization. Basically uh, the natural element that is present in earth, that is present in our life rather, we have uh, the in villages uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, natural elements present and in city we see that uh, it is developed and we uh, feel that we we feel suffocated okay we feel that we, we are uh, in a hectic life we are surrounded by machines we are surrounded by construction we are surrounded by vehicles okay so all that make us wonder that uh, whether we are in peace or not so the poet in the poem is in search of peace and tranquility. So he wants to seek peace. He wants to go uh, away from the day-to-day -day activities, from the life that he is uh, living. So he wants to go to, uh, to near uh, the nature. So in the poem we will see that his uh, longing for uh, getting back to his uh, native place, the place in his free. So the Innisfree is a place which is uh, known as the Lake Island. Okay, so the Lake Island of Innisfree. He was uh, born in Ireland. So in a county he lived. Okay, in London he lived for uh, after 15 years he went back to Ireland. So he spent his time for 15 years in London. Okay, so he wants to go back to his uh, native village and he wants to. Um, experience all those natural elements that he used to feel in his uh, childhood once more. Okay, so in the poem we have seen that in the stanza one, what we have seen, we have seen that uh, the poet says that I go, I would rise, I would arise and go back to industry. So he's saying in the part one, uh, in the part one I have explained in the stanza one, he shows his. Uh, his uh, desire to go back to his village and there he wants to uh, he wants to uh, he wants to build a beehive because if he is there he will want to uh, have food uh, without food he can't survive so he's saying that I will grow bean rows you all know what are beans so he wants to grow the bean rows he wants to uh, have his beehive from which he can get the honey and he is saying that I will uh, make a cabin there with clay and wood and I will reside in the cabin and uh, the only sound that will disturb me uh, in my uh, village will be that of the honeybees that I will have in the beehive. Okay, so you see that while we are living in the city uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, things that affect us the noise that uh, comes from the uh, vehicles that come from the industries that comes from everywhere okay so he's saying that only noise that i will uh, hear will be of that honeybees so in a sense he is uh, showing us the difference the contrasting element that 
what is a major difference between uh, the city life and the village life that in city we are surrounded by a lot of things we are living a busy life and in uh, the village the only sound that can disturb us uh, can be of uh, the honey okay so in the second stanza we will see that what are some more elements of nature that the poet likes and what he expects to experience in his village while uh, being away from the busyness of his schedule okay so now let's start the uh, uh, the second stanza i will read the poem i will uh, read the poem and i will explain the poem simultaneously and then we will move ahead to the third stanza and then we will see the uh, poetic devices that are used in the poem and our poem will be concluded one more thing i have uh, mentioned in the previous video that what question i have given you when this video will be uploaded when this video will uh, reach you that day our google meet session will also be there so in that session i will ask you the question that i have posted in the part 1 so those who don't know what question i am going to uh, put up in front of you you must go back to the part 1 and watch that video as well so now let's start the second stanza of your poem the lake isle of inesprit let us now look uh, at the second stanza uh, first stanza i am sure you all are now uh, you have now well understood now we will move ahead to the second stanza which is a very important stanza of the poem because it will tell us that how the poet finds peace in the first stanza he is seeking peace he is saying that uh, if he will go to inesprit he will uh, seek peace he will have peace now we see that uh, does the poet really find peace or uh, what are the elements that makes him feel peaceful of the village of course so now let's see that what the second stanza is saying so here we have uh, the second stanza and i shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow dropping from the waves of the morning to where the cricket sings the midnights all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evenings full of the linnet's wings so here you see that i have marked a few words see for example slow sings glow and wings so while i have marked the words you know the poetic device the literary device that we use in poems uh, that the poet uses what are those one of the most important device is the rhyming scheme it makes the poem beautiful if the words will lie rhyme then the uh, poem will uh, will be very uh, catchy so see here the word slow is rhyming with glow sings is rhyming with wings so what will be the uh, rhyming scheme a okay for slow we have put a for glow we have put a so a b a b okay that is the way we find that what the rhyming scheme of the poem is so that we will discuss in the uh, uh, last part of the poem also but for now let's uh, see the second stanza and i shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow so the poet is saying that in in a street i will have some peace there because peace comes dropping slow he is saying that i am not very uh, what do we say i am not very um, very in a very early uh, i am in a very early stage and i am not uh, very what do we say i am very patient i am very patient that finally i will have my peace because peace comes dropping slow dropping slow means it comes slowly and gradually it it is not like that you will uh, start doing something or you will be there in the valleys or you will be there uh, near to the nature and you will find the peace no you will uh, live at the moment you will live in the place you will spend some time and then gradually and slowly you will find your peace so he is saying that i am there i shall have uh, some peace there because i know for peace comes dropping slow 
it comes very slowly and it comes in a process okay now see that he is saying that it will come i know that i will have my peace and how he will have his peace he is saying that uh, what will be the elements that will make him feel peaceful so he is saying that what he witnesses in the um, in the village that makes him realize that okay i will have the peace because there are some elements which makes him feel at peace see dropping from the base of the morning to where the cricket sings so he is mentioning the things that will make him feel peaceful here veils means a piece of fine material worn by women to protect or hide the face okay so in the, in the uh, muslims we they hide their faces uh, they have that parda okay so that is uh, mentioned here the veil that is used to, uh, to uh, hide the face Uh, maybe you can uh, hide the face for uh, the uh, for the uh, for sun to protect you from sun okay so he is saying that the dropping the veil dropping from the veil so he is saying that peace will come from the veil of the morning to where the cricket sings okay so what uh, do we um, understand by the from the veil of the morning so he is saying that the morning uh, where the clouds have covered the sky it looks like that a woman has covered her face with a veil okay so he is uh, comparing uh, the cloudy sky with the veil so he is saying that will make me feel peaceful the cloudy sky it looks very beautiful uh, to the poet and he is saying from there i will get my peace and to where the cricket sings okay you know what is cricket cricket here doesn't means the sport that we play cricket means an insect like grasshopper but with a relatively shorter legs okay it has a shorter leg and uh, it is like that grasshopper only so it's saying that the cricket sound that will come will make me feel peaceful okay now see what other elements are there there midnights all a glimmer and moon a purple glow okay so he is saying that in my village the midnight i will wake up at the midnight and i will see the sky that will be full of stars and that shine of the stars will make my heart at peace i will be very uh, peaceful by the look of the sky that will be full of stars so the uh, the starry sky will make him feel peaceful okay so the second element of the nature sorry the third element of the nature the first one was the veil of the morning the cloudy sky okay and the cricket was the second the cricket song he will he will admire and the third is the midnight's glimmer okay the uh, the sky that is full of the stars that are shining very brightly are making him feel that he is at peace okay so the, this element of nature is also used uh, to show that what uh, are the uh, elements of nature that make someone be peaceful these are all beauty uh, beautiful elements of nature that makes us wonder that how mother earth is or how our nature is what are the wonders of the nature okay and a moon and moon a purple glow okay so he is saying that at night at midnight i will admire the uh, sky that is full of stars and at uh, the noon in afternoon i will admire the purple glow that the sun will produce so the sky that is full of that uh, purple glow i will admire that also and that will make me feel peaceful so in cities we miss all of that cloudy sky the sky that we see in cities especially if you will see uh, delhi for example delhi there you must have heard a lot of uh, pollution issue is there so the pollution uh, that causes the sky uh, to uh, to miss that uh, clouds or the uh, the clean uh, the clean environment okay so he is saying that in my village i will admire the clouds i will admire the sky that is full of star uh, you see uh, when there is a lot of pollution the stars are not that much visible okay so he is saying that i will admire all of those 
and he is saying in the afternoon i will admire the sky uh, the sun the purple glow of the sun and at last he is saying the evenings full of the linnet's wings what are uh, linnet's wings linnet is a small uh, brown and gray bird okay so the linnet is a small uh, brown and gray bird which uh, sings very beautifully the sound that uh, she produces the chirping that she does it does is very beautiful okay so he saying that in evening i will admire the chirping of that bird and uh, the linnet's wings if she will uh, you know, flap her wings so i will admire that song uh, that uh, sound that will be produced so all these elements of nature are making him uh, say are uh, are uh, making him in a peaceful state of mind okay so the poet here mentions all of these elements you have understood what are the elements first is the sky that is full of clouds in the morning the sky is full of clouds and that is looking like a veil okay and second we see that the crickets a uh, song that he will admire and um, the third is the midnight's glimmer the sky that will be full of stars that uh, shiny stars will make him uh, feel at peace and then the afternoon's purple glow the sky that is filled with the sun's purple glow that is very um, very nice view okay and then he says that an evening full of the linnet's wings so all of the elements that are missing from the city life he has mentioned here so he has mentioned that how he will feel at peace in his village in the part in the year stanza one sorry we have seen that he is uh, adamant to go to his village he is adamant to go to the lake island of uh, in his free in his free which is uh, the lake isle which is it is called uh, the lake isle so he is saying that he will go there and he will admire the uh, beauty of nature and it will make him feel peaceful but here in the second stanza he has mentioned the elements which will make him feel that way okay so i hope that you have understood the first and the second stanza now we will move ahead with the concluding stanza and then we will conclude our poem so i hope you have understood all of Uh, the elements that are there for the poet to feel at peace here is the third and the concluding stanza of our poem and here again the poet is uh, mentioning the things that makes him feel go back to in his feet in the first stanza uh, the poet has told us about the things that uh, he is feeling that he wants to seek peace in the second stanza he has told us about the elements that are there in his village in his free in his town in his free what he lacks in the city and here again he is referring to such elements which are making him run back to his in his free so see let's start i will arise and go now for always night and day I hear the lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. While I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart's core. So here again, see the uh, circled words: day, shore, grey, and core. So shore and core are rhyming. Day and grey are rhyming. So day we will uh, denote by a. and grey will be denoted by a because both of them are rhyming and shore will be denoted with b so core will be with b so a b a b it is the rhyming scheme for the poem and in uh, all three stanzas this is the rhyming scheme used by the poet now see what the poet is uh, telling us i will arise and go now see remember in the first stanza he has started the poem with these words i will arise okay i will arise and go now for always night and day that means for all the time he is uh, feeling something he is saying that i will arise and go to uh, and go now to in his free because for uh, all the time for throughout the day and night 
I hear the lake water lapping with blue sounds by the shore. So he is saying that I want to go to Inasuri right now. I want to uh, stand up and leave for Inasuri because for every time uh, I feel that I hear the lake water that is in my town striking the sea shore. So with the heavy blows, the water is uh, coming towards the shore. So he is hearing that. Uh, that uh, sound of the river and he is saying that I want to run back to my town because I hear that sound and in the city he is hearing the vehicles noise all of that noise he is having so he wants to hear that sound once more he is saying that in my mind always that sound is coming and what other factor he is giving while I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey I hear it in the deep heart's cold so he is saying that while I stand on the roadway, means while I stand in any path or on the pavement's grey. What does pavement's grey means? Pavement means uh, the buildings and grey means all the construction because grey is associated with pollution. So he is saying that all that construction, all that huge buildings that uh, where I go, where I stand, that uh, part of my day whenever I am in that busyness, I feel that I am hearing that noise, that sorry not noise, that lovely melodious sound of that seashore and I hear it in the deep heart score. Deep heart score means the innermost part of the heart, from within the heart and lapping me is striking, the lake water striking with uh, low sounds by the shore, okay. So he's saying that I hear it in my uh, from within my heart that I am hearing that uh, reverse voice and I want to run away from all that construction, all that uh, all that pollution and I want to go back to Inesuri and I want to uh, arise right now and I want to leave right now. So these are the things that the uh, poet is uh, experiencing. He is saying that I want to run away from the Business of the city life and I want to go back to in a street where I will hear the cricket's voice, the, I will see the purple glow of the sky, I will see the uh, sky, sky that is full of stars, I will see the linnet bird flapping its wings. So all that beauty of nature is missing and he wants to run back to in a street to witness them once more. As a child he has witnessed them and he wants to go back to the village and he wants to witness them once more. I have mentioned that uh, the poet left for London and he returned at the age of 15. So maybe this poem is of that time when he wanted to return to Ireland from London and he was missing Ireland, he was missing in his feet and uh, at that time he has created this beautiful verse, this beautiful lyric. And this poem, as I have mentioned, is a lyric. It is a, um, it is a kind of a song uh, poem. Okay, so this is what our poet says in the poem. I hope you have understood all three stanzas. Now we will conclude the poem with the literary devices, and I will uh, summarize the poem, and uh, you will do the summary on your own. I will provide you the uh, extract-based questions and the uh, word meanings. And that you will do in your notebook along with the summary that you will do on your own. So let's start the literary devices and uh, conclude our poem quickly. Finally, we are in the concluding part of our poem. We will see the literary devices that are used in the poem and we will conclude our poem with that. Okay, so here are a few literary devices that are used in the poem. See, the first, the rhyme scheme. Uh, I have explained you the rhyme scheme while explaining the stanzas. So here see A B A B. I have explained that how the words are rhyming. Uh, for example, slow and blue were rhyming. Okay, shore and core. So A B A B is the rhyming scheme of the poem. Second uh, literary device or poetic device that is used in the poem is alliteration. What is alliteration? Repetition of a consonant sound in uh, two or more places tandemly. 
when uh, they are uh, repeated, the sound is repeated in a single line or uh, they are repeated closely. How see? For example, I and honeybee are very close words. They are, they are used very closely in uh, a similar line or in the similar stanza and the H sound, the consonant sound of H is repeated. I H sound and honeybee H sound. Lapping and lake L sound is repeated. So these are the two instances where the poet has used alliteration. If there is any other alliteration, you can comment in the uh, comment section. Now the third uh, poetic device that is used by the poet is repetition. See how when a phrase, when a word, when a sentence or a phrase is used in a poem uh, more than once, so it is repetition. It is the device of repetition. I will arise and go now. So it was uh, in the first stanza and it was in the third stanza as well. So the repetition is also used here. Now see the fourth device personification. The personification you all know when a non-living thing or when a thing is compared with a person. When it is personified, see morning. Morning is not a uh, uh, person, but morning is uh, used, is uh, signified as a person, is symbolized uh, as a person in the poem. How? Veils of the morning. Veils are mentioned, are explained that veils are the, that, uh, that uh, material used to cover the face of a woman, especially a woman. So, here, veils of the morning. So, morning cannot put a uh, veil on its face because morning doesn't have a face. So here morning is personified as a woman maybe. Okay. And metaphor. What is metaphor? When we uh, compare two things without using light. When we use light it is similar. So here clouds as waves. Okay. So clouds are uh, here we have uh, the poet has used waves of the morning and waves are used for clouds without actually using without actually comparing the two with like or as okay so uh, waves are uh, signifying the clouds so waves are the uh, waves are used as the metaphor for clouds it is not personification because clouds are also not uh, living beings and here uh, morning is used uh, is shown as a person is shown as a as a person whom the poet is referring to but here Waves are used to uh, symbolize the clouds. The waves of morning means poet is uh, mentioning about clouds, but he has not used the words clouds, but he has used the word waves. So these were a few devices that the poet has used to beautify, to um, add um, 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 uh, element, add an element of beauty to his poem. The poem itself is very nice because uh, it, the poet has used the imagery very well. He has used all the elements of nature he has put in his poem and he has compared the city life, the civilized life to the life of village, the life that is surrounded by natural elements. So the poet has shown his uh, longing for going back to Innisfree where he has resided as a child. He wants to run back to uh, the nature. So here the poet has very beautifully explained all of that. I hope you have understood the poem and what is the theme of the poem? Nature versus civilization. Okay, so the poem is very simple but very beautiful. You also must be having few things in mind that makes you feel peaceful. I mentioned in my previous video that uh, I will ask you in the Google Meet what are the things that makes you feel peaceful. So that question you will take in the Google Meet session and for now here our poem concludes i hope you have understood the poem and i hope you have enjoyed the poem and if you have any confusion feel free to ask okay anytime you can send your suggestions your questions your feedback and if you have any confusion you can put in the comment section as well and if you want to uh, talk to me personally that is also welcome okay so this was aman you were watching pto classes and we have learned the poem, The Lake Isle of Innisfree. So, till the next video, take care of yourself. We will meet again soon uh, through the 
online lecture through the lecture from YouTube and we will interact again on Google Meet. So till then, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.